Hello, welcome to BM6611 Managing Brands, Integrating Marketing Communications to Build Brand Equity. This session links to the previous session, session eight, where we looked at three of the elements of marketing programs, the product or service itself, pricing and channels of distribution, and how these operational marketing elements contribute to building and supporting brand equity. And in this session, we build on that by looking at the fourth element of what is often referred to as the marketing mix, the fourth uh, element of operational marketing, integrated marketing communications. Just let's remind ourselves where this fits into the bigger picture of brands and brand equity. So here we have Kevin Keller's customer-based brand equity pyramid and uh, with all of the different levels that contribute together to, to create, to build and to support brand equity over time, starting at the bottom, the foundation with salience, deep and broad awareness, and moving up all the way through to the top to resonance, where the brand has some kind of attachment relationship uh, with the customer. And what we're looking at in this session and in the previous session is the role that the elements of operational marketing play in constructing, creating, delivering brand equity day in, day out, week in, week out. Because the brand cannot be divorced from the day-to-day -day marketing operations of the organisation. Those operations must be focused on the brands that the organisation offers to the market and must be directed specifically towards each brand's positioning in its marketplace, the type of image that it is seeking to create, uh, the type of judgments and feelings and so on and so forth. So there must be nothing random about operational marketing activities, pricing decisions, distribution channel decisions, advertising, sales promotion, public relations, etc. They must all be made in light of the customer based brand equity model and what kind of positioning is sought for the brand and how equity is to be built. So, as I said in a previous session, we looked at products and services, pricing and distribution channels and the importance that each of these elements of the marketing mix have in enhancing brand awareness and in establishing the desired brand image. And now we're going to focus on marketing communications. So the reading for this session is another Keller paper 2016, Unlocking the Power of Integrated Marketing Communications. How integrated is your IMC programme? And that was published in the Journal of Advertising. And there are two additional readings which present the alternative view uh, of the role that IMC plays in brand equity from the so-called Ehrenbergian scholars, one by Andrew Ehrenberg himself of 2000 paper and one by Ehrenberg et al. 2002. So taken together, these papers give you both perspectives on the role that IMC plays in building and supporting brand equity. So our focus is on marketing communications. And again, this is all about working upwards through that CBBE um, brand equity pyramid, building depth and breadth of awareness, enhancing awareness over time, establishing the desired brand image in the mind of the customer so that they can make appropriate judgments about the brand, so that the brand creates positive feelings and ultimately resonates with the customer. One of the important things about marketing communications is the huge range of different communications tools that are available to the marketer. No one communications tool on its own can deliver the perfect strategy. And so it's important to mix and match to choose a range of communications tools they all have their own particular strengths and weaknesses also. And so the, the optimum strategy is achieved 
through integrating across the whole range of communications tools and not over relying on any one type of marketing communication. So what role then does IMC play in brand building and brand management? Well, according to Keller et al, it's a very important one. IMC is essentially the voice of the brand, the voice of the brand out there in the marketplace, the voice of the brand speaking to the customer, but also speaking to other stakeholders, uh, employees of the organisation, suppliers, intermediaries such as wholesalers and retailers. So IMC allows the brand to speak. And as a result, IMC is not only a means to convey information through speech, but a means of building a dialogue and a very important way of therefore building relationships with customers. And as we'll see, some communications tools are one way, but some are two way, interactive and enable a very real time, personalised, meaningful dialogue to be constructed between the brand and stakeholders such as customers. Integrated marketing communications also have very important role because they allow marketers to inform people about a brand, its name, its product category, its benefits, its values, its purpose. According to Keller, a critically important role of IMC tools is to persuade, to persuade the trade to stock a product, to persuade the customer to trial a product and to continue to buy, to persuade the customer that the brand has a particular image that makes it different from everything else in the market, to persuade the customer that this brand is superior quality to anything else that is available. Now this persuasion role for integrated marketing communications is commonly believed uh, within the IMC industry, within people who work for advertising agencies, sales promotion agencies, etc., that their job is to persuade uh, stakeholders about the brand. But as we'll see later, um, the alternative view is that integrated marketing communications cannot persuade, can simply inform. Through integrated marketing communications, the brand owners can provide incentives to the trade, to stock a product, to consumers to buy a product. And another important role is a reminder role. It's often forgotten, but most advertising, sales promotion, etc., is reaching people who already know about a brand. The uh, brand awareness of Coca-Cola globally is something like about 96%. So there's not really much of a job to do with a brand like that, to grow, or to build brand awareness. So the important role of advertising and other forms of communication is a reminder role to remind consumers that the brand exists and to keep the brand name front of mind so that um, it, it is the first brand that is considered when the product situation is, is coming to, to fruition, when the, when the product is sought. And therefore, of course, integrated marketing communications contribute to brand equity by building salience, establishing the brand in memory, both at depth and breadth of brand awareness. And also because of the content of the marketing communications, the message that is put across, the, the storyline, the people who are shown, uh, etc. The integrated marketing communications can also create strong, favourable and unique, according to Keller, etc. Associations and link those strong, favourable, unique associations to the brand. So very simply, through IMC, we can tell customers and other stakeholders what the product is, why a product would be used, what kind of person a product would be for, what kind of organisation, if it's a business to business product or service, 
where it should be used, when it should be used, etc. Very simple information. Also through IMC, we can explain who makes a product, what the company stands for, what the brand stands for. So we can convey uh, image, corporate reputation, as well as brand image. This is increasingly important when organisations want to be able to convey that they are socially responsible, that their practices are sustainable and that their brands are ethical. And here there's definitely an emphasis on persuasion. A simple example can be seen if you click on this link in the wake up to Nutella. Nutella we've looked at before, it's, it's a good example to, to use for many reasons. It's a market leading chocolate hazelnut spread, very, very popular uh, in European countries such as France. Often considered to be a children's product and uh, the example that you'll be able to click through to here is an advertisement that showed that Nutella is not just for children but for all members of the family. So seeking to broaden Nutella's salience and make it more appropriate or make it, make it seem to be appropriate for all members of a family rather than just the children. An, an important role of integrated marketing communications is to um, work with new product launches or from time to time sales promotion campaigns which are designed to increase sales. Sales may be lagging and therefore uh, a sales promotion campaign is required to give a, an, an injection of energy uh, and hopefully result in a, uh, an increase in sales. And through IMC devices such as sales promotion, consumers can be given an incentive to trial a product in the first place, or they can, they can be given rewards for trial or ongoing usage. And the example here that you can click through to is a toilet tissue company with the rather uh, challenging name of Who Gives a Crap? And they sell on subscription uh, toilet tissue which is made from recycled paper and which has no plastic in the packaging at all. And so it is attractive to consumers who are seeking to be more sustainable, to cut down their, um, their plastic that they use, etc. And in order to, we don't normally buy toilet tissue on subscription, we receive a large box at a time, so it's a very new thing. There is a free trial offer to incentivize and that is advertised online, uh, linked to social media pages, etc. Also through integrated marketing communications, we can create these all important positive associations for a brand by linking the brand to all sorts of other entities, people, places, events, other brands, experiences, feelings and things. We can tell stories through marketing communications. We can show the brand being used in particular places, in particular ways, with particular people, maybe real famous people or actors portraying particular types of people. So the amount of information that they can be conveyed and the subtlety of information and the depth of information that can be conveyed with marketing communications is enormous. And this is really the, the part of operational marketing where information delivery is most um, achieved. With the, according to Keller and uh, people who, who also believe in, in his view of brand equity, with the emphasis being on persuasion, persuading the stakeholder, the customer, uh, the retailer that this is the brand for them. This Linear model here is a, a rather old but still frequently used model of how marketing communications works, starting with exposure. So a customer is exposed to a, a piece of marketing communications, such as a, a, an advertisement on a poster or a newspaper. It grabs their attention, provided the um, the piece of marketing communications is, is well crafted, it's creative, it will grab their attention. 
um, hopefully that will then result in comprehension. A clear message will come through from the piece of marketing communications. There will be uh, information that has been conveyed and the information will have been conveyed in a clear and memorable way that will result in comprehension. So the customer will then take something away from their exposure to this piece of marketing communications. They will take meaning away from this exposure. That meaning will then sit around in their brain. They will think about it and they may start to um, have an effect on them. They may think about it and think, oh, I would really like to try that brand. Or next time I'm going to buy a new car, I'm going to uh, investigate that uh, that new brand and I'm going to uh, take it for a test drive. Or next time I have to buy some coffee, I'm going to try that brand because it's fair trade and uh, it looks really like it would be very nice, etc. And that creates an intention so that when the purchase situation arises, the customer is has that intention ready. They have the brand in their mind. They remember the brand. They remember the, the message that they got. They remember the meaning from the brand. And ultimately, then that translates into buyer behavior. They purchase the brand and they continue to purchase the brand over time. So again here, there's always the emphasis on persuasion. As we move from stage to stage in the model, the consumer is being persuaded to stick with the brand, persuaded to understand what the brand is about, persuaded that this brand is meaningful, persuaded uh, to, to put it into their um, repertoire, their choice set, persuaded to buy it. A very simple test for integrated marketing communications, for any marketing communications tool, is the extent to which it can turn current knowledge of a brand into desired knowledge of a brand. Now, in the case of a new brand that is being launched, the current brand knowledge can be zero then. And so the role of communication is to create brand awareness in the first place, to build that all important foundation level of Keller's pyramid brand salience so that the customer knows who the brand is. If a brand has been around for a while, there's still a, a job to do um, in making sure that marketing communications communicate the current positioning of the brand, what the brand owner wants the customer to know and to understand about the brand in terms of its unique points of difference relative to the competition, its points of parity that give it the right to compete uh, in this product category, the, the image that is to be created, the meaning that is to be created for the brand. Again, always with this emphasis on persuasion. Let's look now at the different types of marketing communications media and tools and options that are available. And we can divide those into the so-called traditional communications options and the newer communications options. So under the traditional heading, we have media advertising, advertising that is, um, that is conducted on uh, paid for television, on commercial radio stations, newspapers, magazines, etc. The, uh, the most uh, common form of advertising historically and still very important, still has an extremely important role to play. Then we have outdoor advertising such as billboards, uh, posters, uh, street furniture, bus shelters, litter bins with um, advertising panels on the side. And also cinema is sometimes considered to, to be in this category. Cinema advertising sort of straddles the boundary really between media and outdoor. Outdoor advertising is incredibly important in um, all uh, market sectors and all countries, but is particularly important in developing countries. Um, and also, in uh, countries in parts of the world where people do spend a lot of time out of home. 
large swathes of, of Latin America, for example, a lot of life is lived out of the home, out of small flats, um, small, very small homes. And so uh, advertising is more likely to be noticed and seen if it is in the form of posters than if it is in the other format. Then we've got what's known as point of purchase or point of sale advertising. Advertising uh, which takes place within retail outlets, such as end of gondola displays in a supermarket, where there might be a poster in a, a display for a new brand of shampoo. Um, tickets that appear on the actual gondola shelves themselves, promoting a uh, money off or uh, extra product or a, a free trial uh, of a product which is wrapped around another, such as a small size conditioner, which is wrapped around a bottle of shampoo. And that would be advertised at the point of purchase. And point of purchase advertising is obviously very valuable because not all consumers remember brands, no matter how good the other advertising and communications may be, our memories are not perfect. And so point of purchase gives the brand owner an opportunity to remind the consumer right at that all, in point, all important point where they're about to put something into their basket, take it up to the checkout to pay. And they may decide, oh, actually, I'll buy that one instead. It's on special offer or there's a new flavour or there's a change in packaging that looks it might like it be uh, the packaging might be less um, more sustainable or easier to work with. So I'll have that one instead. Trade promotions and events are extremely important forms of marketing communication in business to business marketing. And also in, in business to consumer, because as consumers, we can only buy products if they are stopped by the trade. And so manufacturers and brand owners also direct advertising and sales promotion to their um, distribution channel partners, to wholesalers, to cash and carries and to retailers to incentivize, to remind them about the product, to tell them about new products and to incentivize them to stock a product. And trade events such as trade shows and exhibitions are extremely important communications uh, tools within the business to business world, very, very widely used in a whole range of different uh, business to business product categories from software to book publishing, um, to um, uh, equipment manufacturing, cars, all sorts of things. And some of these events um, straddle both the trade and the consumer. So car shows or boat shows or caravan shows are partly about the trade coming together um, and distributors looking for new products to stock and partly about consumers coming in and looking to see what's coming up in these markets. Then we have consumer promotions, what I've been referring to as sales promotion. Uh, things like competitions, um, incentive and reward schemes uh, where you can save up points to, to get a, a, a gift, um, money off, free trial, things of that nature come under the heading of sales promotion. And like point of purchase advertising, these have a very short term immediate effect and they're designed to um, to reach the customer pretty much at the point where they're thinking about making a decision and to incentivize them to make their purchase now rather than waiting next week, next month, next year. Other forms of advertising such as outdoor cinema, radio, etc., have a much longer term effect and work over time to, to keep brands and brand messages in the mind of the consumer. But point of purchase and sales promotion activity is very much about getting an immediate effect, an immediate impact. Then we have sponsorship, uh, sponsorship of events, uh, which is a um, another very quite different but equally important form of marketing communications. Sponsorship it allows a brand um, to really engage and become part of an experience. For example, sponsoring Formula One racing. Red Bull um, has taken that really to, uh, to extreme heights of success where the Formula One racing almost has taken on a life of its own. Um, it's obviously still very much part of the brand. 
Japan, but some people know more about Red Bull through Formula One than they do about drinking the Red Bull energy drink. Uh, business to business organisations such as management consultancies and accountancy practices may sponsor art exhibitions or classical music programmes in order to um, uh, contribute to society, to cultural events. They may provide a way for tickets to be subsidised. Uh, there's been a long running campaign at the National Theatre in London with Travelex um, uh, subsidising tickets to allow as a number of very cheap tickets to be made available and therefore broaden the reach of theatre to people who may not normally be able to afford to go. And that creates awareness of Travelex as a brand, but also creates an image of Travelex as a benevolent and a socially responsible organisation. So depending on the type of event that is sponsored, an organisation can create or can add to and support the image that it wants to portray in its marketplace. And finally, under the traditional uh, options, we have public relations. And this is the, the art and the science of communicating with key stakeholder groups, such as uh, the media, uh, such as uh, lobbying groups, such as um, action, community action uh, groups, uh, trade unions, etc. The, the key role of public relations, the most common role, is dealing with the media. So this is where organisations will um, hope to gain media coverage for the launch of a new product or an activity that they're undertaking by sending out press releases to journalists, to newspapers, to other uh, media organisations in the hope that they will be picked up and get favourable response. But public relations also has a more um, a longer term uh, role in simply uh, continuing to shape an organisation's image in the public eye. And a very important part of public relations is crisis management. So if an organisation has a problem, uh, has a scandal, has some kind of um, uh, negative event that has happened, then it will be the public relations team through their crisis management strategies that will, that will attempt to deal with that and to manage uh, public opinion through the crisis situation. The new communications environment is all, of course, about digital technology and the enormous opportunities that digital media provide for interactivity and for narrow casting of targeting. Also, through geo, uh, geo coding, use of smartphones, etc., um, allowing communications to become hyper localized so that you can be sent a, uh, a message uh, promoting a particular restaurant as you're walking past the door outside, come in, money off. Um, or with, when you're within a store, if you have a store card and the store card, your location will be picked up, if that's in your pocket or your wallet, through um, near field technologies or so-called beacon technologies in the store, you can be sent a message directing you to a particular part of the store based on the organisation, the retailer's knowledge of you and what you've bought in the past through your use of the loyalty card. IKEA do this very successfully. So if you're in a member of the IKEA family, you have their smart card. Um, they will know that you bought a, a sofa bed last time you were there. And so this time you may get a message saying, attracting you to, or, um, uh, reminding you to go to the bedding department to look at duvets, duvet covers, bed linen, etc. So digital technologies allow marketing communications in many ways to be more sophisticated, to, um, to tap into very, very, very specific community groups, uh, to individuals who may become influencers, who through their blogs are seen to have a particular expertise in a product category, whether it's cosmetics or cameras or um, gardening, and a particular appeal with consumers. Their blogs, their videos, their blogs get uh, get what get read, get watched, get liked, 
And as a result, these people become influential um, and sometimes then organisations will pay them to specifically talk about their products and services. And of course, we have the all important search engines, Google dominating that market, but also Bing and Yahoo have some market share in search and the importance of search in the customer journey when customers are thinking about a new car, thinking about changing their living room furniture, thinking about where they may go on holiday. Search engines play a critical role and therefore um, optimising the key words that are linked to a brand is critically important to ensure that that brand comes up on the first page of the search results because people are not very patient if something doesn't really appear on that all important first landing page when they clicked search they're not necessarily going to look very much further then we have virtual reality and augmented reality part of our digital stable of tools which are enabling events marketing experiential marketing to become much much more sophisticated uh, using avatars, uh, allowing people to interact with celebrities through um, virtual reality, uh, etc. So extremely exciting um, ways of incorporating these techniques into not just advertising, but other forms of market and communication. Gamification is also increasingly used um, in in um, marketing communications through through digital turning advertisements, sales promotion campaigns into into games and competitions, echo, echoing the uh, the sort of um, the way that video games are used for for pleasure to play and bringing that kind of competitive element into marketing communications. And although not necessarily digital, another key um, trend in the last decade or so is the ubiquity of product placement which used to be um, something that was particularly done in, in the United States and was not so common elsewhere but product placement is now mainstream and by product placement I mean the use of branded merchandise in TV shows in movies etc so that um, we are exposed to a brand in the setting of our favourite sitcom or rom-com or adventure movie or series. Now, one of the implications of Keller's customer-based brand equity framework is that although we have to create associations for a brand, the way in which we do that, the manner in which those associations are formed, the tool that we use to create them actually does not matter. So therefore, the marketeer should evaluate all the possible communications options. And as I said at the beginning of the session, all of those different communications tools have their own particular strengths and weaknesses. They can accomplish different objectives. Some are better at conveying very detailed, complex information. Some are better at uh, reaching very large numbers of people with a sort of simple message and so on and so forth. This diagram, this matrix, this two by two matrix displays different uh, integrated marketing communications tools according to, first of all, on the horizontal axis, their credibility, the extent to which the customer or the stakeholder will believe the communication. And a simple two-way split here has been made. So on the left, we have integrated marketing communications that come from sources which are either completely paid for or partly paid for by the brand owner, the marketer themselves, marketer-dominated sources. And these are considered to have lower credibility than non-marketer dominated sources so for example on the left hand side we have advertising which is paid for by the organization on the right hand side we have news uh, editorial content in a newspaper which is not paid for by the brand owner a journalist has chosen to write about the company or a brand 
and therefore it gets more credibility. On the vertical axis, the uh, integrated marketing communications tools are organized according to whether they reach a large number of people at one point in time or whether they can be targeted to a small number of people or possibly even targeted to a known individual, i.e. personalized. So again, on the a simple two-way split has been made and on the upper half of the matrix, we have mass media integrated marketing, integrated marketing communications tools that deliver the message to a very large number of uh, customers or potential customers all at once, such as a large circulation newspaper uh, like the Financial Times or the New York Times or um, the, uh, the Guardian, um, advertising on television or radio, again, reaching thousands, potentially millions of, of people, uh, a large poster next to an air busy airport at the, or at the side of a, a very, very large busy road. Um, being seen by thousands of drivers and people on buses and potentially trains, etc., every hour. And on the lower half of the matrix, we have the narrow casting or small scale personalized uh, integrated marketing communications tools, such as a salesperson, a sales agent, a service representative talking individually face-to-face to, face to a customer or on the telephone or online. And then on the bottom right-hand quadrant of our matrix, we have all the forms of word of mouth. Word of mouth uh, recommendations for products or brands that we, we hear about from our family, from our friends, neighbours, co-workers, etc. Also, opinion leaders and influencers fall into this category. But interestingly, as soon as an influencer starts to be perceived as being paid by an organization, they would drift to the left into the marketer dominated source column alongside salespeople. They'd be seen as potentially just another sort of salesperson, albeit one with perhaps more, uh, more knowledge. Um, but nonetheless, somebody that was in the pay of the organisation. So influencers have that choice to make. Do they want to remain independent or do they want to take money from organisations and lose something of their credibility as a result? Now, on the far right of the diagram, you can see two arrows. One arrow is reach. Reach means what percentage of a target audience can we actually get at through the marketing communication. Reach is high at the top of the diagram and low at the bottom. Any one person spreading word of mouth can only talk to potentially 5, 10, 15, 20 people. Um, a, a television programme where there's a news item about the launch of a new product can reach millions of people. An advertisement likewise. The second arrow is the extent to which the communication tool is capable of interactivity, two-way communication, a dialogue that is low at the top. The top two cells of the matrix are really about one-way communication. The customer is passive, the brand owner, the advertiser is active or the communicator is active. The information is going in one way only. Whereas at the bottom, the information or the, the communication is two way. Two way communication is extremely powerful because the customer can ask questions. They can say, well, actually, I'm not sure I understand that. Could you explain that to me again? Or can you show me how that works? Can you tell me who has had a good experience with this product? Now, of course, it's important to use tools in every single one of these quadrants of the matrix. Just relying on the bottom right hand corner would be great in terms of interactivity and credibility, but really poor in terms of reach. Just relying on the top left hand quadrant of the matrix, fantastic in terms of reach, but very poor in terms of building any kind of relationship or resonance with the brand through interactivity. 
So they all have a role to play. So the trick then here is integration, and that's why we refer to IMC, Integrated Marketing Communications, using a range of communication tools, using the new and the old or the traditional, blending them together, but not in any random way, blending them very carefully and specifically so that each tool's strengths are capitalized on, so that the overall strategy is achieved and each communication tool has a particular job to play in that overall strategy. So the newer media can allow for greater engagement with the brand, greater resonance, more personalization, um, the ability to say something very, very specific because you know who you're saying it to and it's relevant, and the ability to reach very specific market segments. Whereas the traditional, the older media can offer much, much greater reach, greater control because it's one way, not two way. Therefore, clearer, more consistent brand messages. And so they each have their own important role to play. How do we evaluate integrated marketing communications programs? Well, the first thing we do is to look at coverage. What proportion of the target audience can we reach through each communication option? And is there going to be any overlap between them? So we can just display this diagrammatically. So our overall audience is shown by the rounded corner square on the outside. And we've got three communications options or tools, A, B and C. And the circles indicate the reach of each of these individual communications options. And you can see there's some overlap. So the areas of light shading are where two of the communications tools overlap. In other words, they reach the same target customers. And the dark shaded section in the middle is where all three overlap. So the target customers in that segment in the middle are going to be reached by all three of the communications tools. Now, overlap is not necessarily a bad thing. Too much overlap and you can be wasting money. You're not really utilising the, the particular strength of each communication tool to reach a particular part of your target audience. But some overlap can be very good because the, the core target market in the middle here, the people that are most important for you to reach, are receiving regular communications about the brand over a finite period of time where all of these campaigns are running. So the messages are reinforcing each other and they are receiving even more, even stronger um, communications about the brand. So some overlap is desirable, too much overlap, not so. And this is something that advertising and communications agencies work out mathematically by looking at the circulation of different media, the reach, etc. How else do we evaluate our integrated marketing communications programs? Well, certainly cost. Again, the agencies that brands work with will um, give them, provide them with quotations for how much it would cost to run this particular poster campaign, a digital advertising campaign, a print media campaign. And so all these can be evaluated in terms of the cost to reach one customer, a thousand customers, 10,000 customers. And therefore the budget which is available for communications can be apportioned in the most efficient way. Next, we can look at the contribution uh, and this means the collective effect on the equity of a brand, of the communications options that are chosen, how they work together to enhance and create the depth and breadth of awareness and how they build these strong, favourable and unique brand associations. What contribution do they make to each of the levels in Keller's customer based brand equity pyramid. Then there's something called attribution. 
which uh, is, is increasingly important as more and more money is spent on digital communications uh, tools. And this is the science of assigning um, credit uh, for a sale to a particular communications element or the science of allocating money from a sale to each of the marketing touch points that a customer has been exposed to in the journey leading up to their purchase. So, for example, they may have seen a TV ad, they may have seen a post, they live in a catchment area where a poster campaign was running, they may have received uh, emails uh, from the brand owner, and they may have been exposed to banner advertising online. So what is the relative contribution of each of those pieces of marketing communication to the customer who uh, eventually purchases a product um, which has been advertised? How do each of those pieces of marketing communication, how do they each contribute to generating that sale? And I use the word science deliberately because this is a very mathematical area of, of marketing attribution modeling. Then we have commonality. This is the extent to which the information which is conveyed by each of the communications options shares meaning. So the extent to which uh, meaning is being reinforced by the different communications tools that are used. The extent to which meaning is consistently conveyed across the communications tools used. And that can be very, very important if you have a, a simple message which you want to reinforce again and again and again through all of the communications tools that you use. But sometimes it is not so important to, to reinforce exactly the same message all the time, but to build on it um, and to be able to develop a message with some communications tools, say more provide greater depth of associations, greater depth of knowledge, greater depth of meaning. And so another metric which is considered is complementarity, the extent to which different associations, different linkages can be created um, between the communications options and therefore building uh, meaning in the round. And finally, we have versatility, the extent to which um, the information contained in a piece of marketing communications will work with different types of customers, depending on where they are in the world, uh, which market segment they're in, their communications history, what they know about the brand already. And this is particularly important when we think about global branding. Because ideally, a, a brand which is, is marketed in a wide range of countries all around the world will not have to create completely different advertisements for every country. That would be extremely expensive. And it would be um, very uh, cost effective if advertising can be deployed in different countries, if it can be used across country boundaries. But that will only work if the communication is, is designed in a versatile way so that it doesn't require, for example, a lot of prior knowledge of customers because the, the, the brand may be new in some countries in the world where it has been available for decades in others. Uh, so the more versatile the communication tool, the more easily it can be deployed across different market segments younger consumers, older consumers, those who are new to the brand, those who have been loyal to the brand for years, different languages, different countries in the world. In preparation for the class session, have a look at the Innocent Drinks website and you can look at their um, back catalogue of advertising and videos that have been created. Uh, lots of examples of pieces of marketing communications and think about the, the message that is coming across, uh, the image that is being created, the extent to which these are complementary, uh, the extent to which they are versatile and could potentially be used in different countries, 
uh, and so on and so forth. So have a look at a selection of pieces of marketing communications on Innocent and bring your thoughts to the scheduled class session. Now, I mentioned the alternative view of integrated marketing communications, and this is a picture of Byron Sharp, uh, Byron Sharp, Professor Byron Sharp, who wrote the very uh, successful books, How Brands Grow, Volumes 1 and 2. And he is a leading light in this so-called Ehrenbergian school of thought, who disagree with Keller's view of brands and brand equity. So let's look now at how Byron Sharp and his colleagues view the role of marketing communications. Well, they certainly agree that marketing communications are the way in which brands get publicity. They also agree with Keller that marketing communications are the, the dominant way, the critically important way in which salience is created, depth and breadth of brand awareness by communicating the brand name, the product category that the brand is in, and some information about the brand in a very clear and creative manner. They also agree with Keller that integrated marketing communications have a critically important reinforcement role to play, reminding the customer of the brand over time always keeping it fresh and front of mind. What they disagree on is persuasion. They do not believe that integrated marketing communications have the power to persuade. Their view of marketing communications is more straightforward. Marketing communications create awareness. That awareness can lead to the customer trialing a product. Once they have trialled a product, if they like it, they may then uh, continue to buy the product or they may need to be reminded of the product. Perhaps the interval between purchases is quite long. We don't, for example, buy a new car every week. Sometimes we only buy a new car every decade, maybe every three, four or five years. So there is a reinforcement role to play so that Ford uh, Volkswagen, BMW, Audi, whoever it is, are kept in mind so that when we next need to purchase, we remember the brand, uh, we think about the brand, the brand is in our mind and we trial it again. And obviously this works for business to business products, for consumer products, as well as expensive durables like cars. So a more simple, straightforward awareness, trial, reinforcement, ideally get into the habit of buying repeat purchase. So another job for you to do in preparation for our next class session, watch these three different advertisements for bread, three brands of bread that are available here in the UK. And once you've watched them all, maybe you'll have to watch them a couple of times, decide for yourself whether you think they illustrate Keller's view of the role of integrated marketing communication or Byron Sharp and his colleagues view. So is this advertising really persuading you that each brand is unique, um, that it has unique uh, features, capabilities, benefits, values um, that uh, you would not find from any other brand? Or is the advertising simply creative publicity, which is designed to remind you or to introduce you to the brand name or to remind you of the brand name and keep it in your mind. So in summary then, marketing communications are the voice of the brand, the way that the brand speaks to stakeholders. Marketing communications contribute to brand equity by building awareness, salience, by forming associations and by building and enhancing brand knowledge. All relevant marketing communications tools should be used in developing communications campaigns. The key word is integration. So you should mix and match the tools to optimize the reach and the coverage of target markets and to facilitate 
interaction between the, the brand and its customers and its other stakeholders, and therefore the building and the ma maintenance of relationships. And these two different views in the Kellerian view, integrated marketing communications informs, reminds, and persuades. In the alternative or Ehrenbergian view, integrated marketing communications is simply creative publicity which cannot persuade anyone to do anything, but plays a really important role in informing us and reminding us of brands. And our next session uh, after uh, integrated marketing communications is brand ethics. And your compulsory reading for brand ethics session 10 is the 2005 paper by Fan, Ethical Branding and Corporate Reputation from the journal Corporate Communications. And as always, there are another couple of readings for you to flesh out your knowledge of ethics in branding. But for now, that's all. Goodbye.